Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to look at how to add unit tests to your C++ projects that use CMake. And we will make use of a feature we have learned about in the last lecture, which is using fetch content to pull third party dependencies into our project. And we will be using a bunch of third party libraries for testing. There are two popular choices. There is Google test, which is what we will look at in this video, but there is also the catch library that we will look at in the next video. So how do we use this library to test? The first thing you need to do is to pull it and we will use fetch content for that. I don't think I need to explain much about this. You already know this from the last video. You use fetch content to declare, you specify a name here, which is going to match what you specify in fetch content make available. And we have this cache variable we are setting here, which is suggested by the documentation. So let's go to the documentation or the source code for Google test. We can do that. So let's say Google test C++. Uh, C++, I think they are going to give us a GitHub link. This is the documentation, the user guide. You can read this to use the library. And uh, let's see. Do we have a CMake integration? Quick start CMake. They give you things you should do and they tell you to set this cache variable here. That's why I am setting that up in our project here. So fetch content to declare, fetch content make available. This is going to make the dependency available to us. And once we have it pulled, downloaded and built, we will find a way to link against it. And here we have a test subdirectory that we have setup, which is going to be containing code that relates to testing. And in its CMake list.txt file, we are setting up an executable named unit tests. And it is going to be made up of the test calc CPP file, which is going to be containing our test code. In this location here, we are just concerned with putting everything together. We will look at this code in a minute. We set up the target link libraries command, which is going to link against the Google test. Again, we are linking our calculator target, which is going to be coming from the SRC folder. I am going to show you this in a minute against the Google test target that is pulled in by the third party dependency that we have downloaded. Again, I know to use this name here, because I read the documentation. If you go in the documentation, they will tell you how to link against it. I think they do. So let's go there and see what are they doing here. Okay, gtest, the gtest main. You see, this is how you know what to link against by reading the documentation. Once you link against the Google test library, you will need to tell CMake to discover the tests. This is going to make your tests integrate well with a feature of CMake that is named the ctest. And it is basically a group of packages that help you do testing in your CMake projects. You're going to see how this works in a minute. This is basically going to allow us to go in our build directory and be able to run the ctest command to run a test for our project. Now that you know how to link against the Google test target, let's look at our root CMake list.txt file. It is going to do one thing we are specifically interested in. It is going to call the enable testing command here, which is really going to make it work well with the testing facilities of CMake. This is something you have to remember to do if your project is doing some testing like we are doing here. Notice we are not doing anything special. We are just setting up our module path variable. We are also including the test directory, which is going to bring in our testing code. Notice that our rooster target is made up of the main CPP file, which is going to link against the calculator target. And the calculator target is going to be containing our calculator code. Let's go to Visual Studio Code and look at this actually. So we have the code that is going to bring in the Google test dependency. It is a custom module. You can set it up like this if you want. Let's go in the source directory, which is going to contain the calculator header, which is really going to be a class containing a bunch of functions for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and doing the modulus operation. We will be using integer variables for this. 
We have the CPP file, which is going to contain the implementations. Nothing really special here, but we have a CMake list that takes the file in this folder, which is going to set up a calculator target. And this target is going to be made up of this CPP file here. We also set up and include the directory, which is going to be the location of this CPP file. Nothing special here. In the main file, which is located in the root of our project, we have the calculator included, okay? And we can do this because remember, we are linking against the calculator from Rooster. And this gives us the ability to use the included directories that were set up by our calculator target. I really want you to understand this. That's why we are able to include here. And this is going to work. We are setting up our calculator object. We are calling our functions. Nothing really special here. The important thing is we want to test. We want to test the code in our functions here. And why do we need to test? If you are a beginning developer, you may think that testing is really a useless endeavor. It's going to slow you down. It's going to take the time that you would be using to do more interesting things. But once your project really grows, it becomes very costly to break things. And tests are a way to guard against breaking your code by error. For example, if you are writing this function in a rush and you come here and you say maybe a minus B is a minus, why not? Let's say 12, for example, by error. This is something that may go undetected for a long time. And if this happens to run, it's going to break your code and it is going to do a lot of bad things. If you have a good system of testing in place, this is going to be detected automatically when you run your tests and you will be exactly brought to this line to fix this problem. Now, if you are a beginning C++ developer and you watch this video, I want you to promise yourself something. Every time you write a line of code, think about how you may test it. That's going to make your code really good and it's going to make your project easily usable by other developers because every time they break something, they are going to be able to detect the mistake and fix it automatically. This is really something you should do. Don't think that tests are a waste of time. They really are not. They are there to help you find problems faster and fix them. Okay, now that we know the theory about testing, let's see how we can test this. We brought in the dependency, have the Google test library integrated in our project by now. We have linked against the target in our test folder. Okay, we have linked against this. Let's look at our test calc CPP file. Okay, so let's do that. It is going to be located in here and it is going to include the gtest. We will be able to include this because we have the transitive dependency in our target that links against this Google test library here. And to use that, you really use these macros. So you say test like this and you specify a name here. Anything under this name is going to be under the same test suit. I think that's what Google test calls them. And once you are inside this block, you set up an object, you call functions on it, and you specify what you expect to return from the function. For example, if we call the add function with two and three, we expect a five, okay, this is something you do. If you call the add function with minus two and three, you should get a one. If you have zero and zero, you should get a zero. We are doing the same thing for subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and modulus. A good thing about being a developer today is that we have a lot of tools Writing testing code used to be a boring thing. Many people don't like it, but now you can use tools like ChatGPT to write testing code for your C++ code. So for example, if you have your logic implemented, you can tell ChatGPT, please write testing code for my function here using the Google test library. Let's actually do this and see what it comes up with because I really want you to be in a shape where you can write your testing code. So let's go to ChatGPT here. Uh, how can I help you today? Please write testing code for my C++ code here. Use Google test as a testing library. Here is the code. It may not exactly give you what you want, but it is really going to give you a good starting point. So let's see. Okay, this is something you see, it is going to give us the code. You have a test fixture and this is something you may search. So what is a test fixture in Google test? 
and you see that it is giving us the same thing basically expect equal if you call the add function you are going to get a five if you are you call this you are going to get this and from now you can really use these tools to help you write tests you don't have to take everything they give you literally they may be wrong but in most cases they are going to give you a good starting point so write tests for your applications so once we have our test folder here, okay, it is what we have seen before. We are including our third party module, which is going to bring in the Google test library. We are setting up the executable and we are telling Google test to make these tests available for consumption by the T test module of CMake. So let's try to build the project to see how all this comes together. We can configure. Let's make sure the build directory is empty. It is empty so we can CMake s and specify the build directory to be build we are going to use the default compiler this is just fine it is going to download the google test for us in the background and if you go in the build directory you see that we have a depths folder underscore depths it is going to download everything the build files have been written in our build folder all we can do now is see make build build to build everything and you can pull the source code I am using here from the Git repository. I am going to share that in the link in the description below. And by the way, if you are finding these videos useful, remember to share, like, and subscribe to support me. This is going to tell the YouTube algorithm that these videos are good and I am really working on them to be good. So if you find them good, please let me know. Tell me what you think about them. Tell me what you think I should be working on the next videos. And that's going to help me out. We have built our binaries. Now we can run rooster. So let's say built. The MSVC compiler that I am using on Windows is going to put the build files in the debug folder. So I can go there and run rooster. You will see that I will see the output here, but I can even CD in the build directory and say C test. If I do that, it is going to say that 80% of the tests passed, but one test failed. Which one failed? Calculator sub. Why is that? Why is our subtraction function failing? Let's go there and look at sub. We broke it by saying we are not doing A minus B. We are saying A minus 12. And we know that it has a problem now. We can go back and fix it and say A minus B. Once we do that, we can come back and see make build again. We are in the build directory, so we can pass the current directory this time. And if we do C test now, we are going to see that our tests have passed 100%. This is what we are looking for. Calling C test in the build directory is going to run your binary, collect output, and show it in a nice way like this. But if you want, you can run the unit test binary directly. So if you go back to the CMake list, that txt file in your test folder, you see that we have set up a unit test executable. So it is a binary executable that we can run. Let's do that. We can go in test, so cd test in the builder directory. If we do ls, you see that we have a debug folder. So this is what msvc does by default. Let's cd into debug and look at that, do ls. You see we have unit tests. We can run this. We can say unit test and if we run it, you see that we can see that our tests have run and everything is really good. This is really all I had to share in this video, showing you how you can do tests for your C++ project using Google Test. Google Test is good in that it also gives you a mocking facility by default. Mocking is something that allows you to fake objects to make them easy to test. I'm not really going to go into that. I may do a video about that if you are interested. If you are interested, please let me know in the comments below. But for now, I just wanted you to see how to use Google Test. And from this point on, make yourself a promise to always test the code that you write. That's going to make life really easy for people who work on your project or even yourself. If you come back to your project, maybe after a year or two, the last time you have worked on it, there is no excuse not to write tests in this time. You can use tools like ChatGPT or even Copilot from GitHub. They are going to write the test for you and you will have a good base on which to do your own things. 
This is really all. Please remember to share your feedback in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please let me know. If there is something I should improve on the video, please let me know. That really helps me make better videos for you guys. I am going to stop here in this video and I will see you next time.